Okay, in this video, we will be covering the first few examples of section 1.3, evaluating limits analytically. So for example one, it says find the limits, and they've given me the two functions, f equaling x plus one, and g being x squared. So the first problem says, find the limit as x approaches two of f. So that means I will be finding this limit. And the strategy says to first try direct substitution. If I substitute two into my function, I get two plus one, which is three. So therefore, direct substitution works and my limit is three. For part B, it says find the limit as x approaches three of g of x, which is x squared. Again, I will try direct substitution and three squared is nine and therefore direct substitution works in this particular case. Now here I'm going to try the limit as x goes to two of g of f of x. So that is going to be g, which is something squared, and f of x in place of the x, so x plus one. So remember your composition functions. Now I'm writing the composition function here. And when I go ahead and use direct substitution, I get two plus one squared, which is three squared, which equals nine. But I could use that theorem in the alternative way, which would be to plug in um, the two into this expression. And then remember how to do this from composition of functions. First, you plug two into your f function, which means I would plug it into the x plus one, two being my x now, which means I get g of three. And then I would plug three into my g function, which is x squared, so it becomes three squared, which is nine. So whether you plug in the two into the notation for a composition function and then work out the composition function or whether you write it as a composition function and then compute the evaluate the limit either way you'll get the same value okay and that value being nine it's pure coincidence that this came out to be the same it's because they specifically asked us to find these values you don't necessarily need these, you just need f to be defined at two, and then of course you need um, g to be defined at three, whatever you get when you plug it into f. Now example two is find the limit of the function. Write a simple function that agrees with the given function at all but one point. So I cannot do direct substitution in this problem because if I did, I would get three cubed minus 27 over three minus three, which ends up giving me zero over zero. This is what's called an indeterminate form. So you can't determine the limit when you get zero over zero. It's not like a regular number where if you got five over five, it equals one. This doesn't work the same way, okay? So that's an indeterminate form, which means I cannot do this problem by direct substitution. So my next strategy is to try to manipulate it somehow, reduce it somehow, so that then I can plug in the x, uh, x equal to three. So I do know that I have a difference of two perfect cubes. And I know how to factor the difference of two perfect cubes using the perfect cubes formula. So it's a minus b, a squared plus a b plus b squared. That's the formula to factor a difference of cubes. So in my case, x is being cubed for the first term and three is being cubed for the second term. So all of my a's will become x's and all of my b's will become threes. So I end up with x minus three, x squared plus three x plus nine. So that's how you factor 
x cubed minus 27. And then you'll notice this factor and this factor will reduce, leaving me with this expression. So I have to take the limit of this expression. Well, now I won't have a zero in the denominator when I plug in three. So now I can try direct substitution. And I end up with nine plus nine plus nine, which equals 27. And that's the limit of this function.